Yo, what's going on, guys? I know for Grand Blue players, you're probably sick of seeing this game. I didn't mention I'll be covering this game quite a lot in the upcoming future, so do understand that. I will also tell you guys that I rolled the Gotsa for Europa. I got wrecked pretty hard. I am still um hopeful that I am able to pull her. Maybe look out for a video. Maybe not. I will be doing a live stream this week on my YouTube channel for Grand Blue. So look out for that. I will put a notice on it on my YouTube channel. I don't I don't have a date as of yet. Most likely this Friday though, so do look out for that. Now for the Dragolia players in this um tell me how can I improve this? Do you feel that this is a series I to keep doing? Uh, this is my first time ever really making an event guide. Normally I, I don't make guides. For, I don't, I've never been a guide type player. I kind of like to this so gameplay and talk about my gameplay, but I get this question a lot on my stream. So I thought it would be a little bit helpful to people since this game is rather new to talk about the event, how the event is being played, what I like about the event, what items are important, crucial to the event and all stuff like that. Before I start any of that, I will mention this will probably be a long video, so this may be something you want to watch or in like a podcast form, I guess. I'll try to make it concise and quick. Do note I may ramble and I'm sorry, just leave in the comments what I can do to improve myself. One thing I will mention before I start any of this is if you look at my items, you may note that a couple of items are missing, mainly because of the fact that I've been doing the event myself and because of that, I've traded for some items. So because of all of that and that situation, I can't really sell everybody everything via in game. I will actually end up be using the wiki for this video. The wiki will be in the description if you guys want to use it. It's a very reliable source of information. If you want to learn more about Dragoldia Lost, if you have questions, you can usually answer them yourself by just looking on the wiki really quick and Hopefully, guys, uh, yeah, you'll use the wiki. Now, this event is Trick or Treasure. It's the first ever event where it's primarily a solo event. There are co-op portions of the event. For example, the co-op boss is Squash the Pumpkin King. Even though it's rather easy, you can play this in a group. It doesn't require too much power, but for people who are newer to the game, you may want to join up in a group. Now, another thing I will mention is that with this event being mainly solo, you're going to have to rely on the AI a lot. So try not to get too stressed out. I was actually getting annoyed myself with the AI. Do note that this game is still rather new. The AI isn't fully fleshed out. Just be sure to leave either a, um, I believe a, uh, what is it called? I don't remember the word off the top of my head. It's a thing you fill out like a form. On your complaints I I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head I'm sorry I forgot but do leave one of those for side games on what you feel that on how the AI can be improved what don't you like and um, yeah I will mention that I am a little bit disappointed in this event I love the uh, the solo portion of the event I think that's picked on I just wish that the co-op portion of this event was a bit harder as I wanted a little bit of challenge with playing with my friends and I feel that they dropped the ball on that, but they really delivered when it came to the solo portion of this event. Do note that Nightly Haunt is a daily battle and it resets at the reset of every day. So when you get your um, ticket, your skip ticket and your item for the day, that's when you can do this quest every time, one time per day. Squash the Pumpkin King is your standard quest. It's going to be the quest you farm mainly to boost up your facility. And you're probably asking, what? Facility? Yeah, this is a facility event. It's not your standard raid battle event or anything like that. It's classified on the facility. And because of that, you're going to need to grind the Pumpkin King in order to get items to upgrade your facility, which is actually crucial to this event. Very crucial, actually. Revenge of the Pumpkin King is a random uh, um, boss encounter 
that can be spawned from Squash the Pumpkin King. It's about to say one in three that you would get it. Um, this is a solo quest, so you cannot assist help on it. It is not the hardest quest. I recommend killing all enemies in the quest for both Squash the Pumpkin King and Revenge of the Pumpkin King. I recommend kill all enemies before focusing on the boss to maximize the drops when doing the quest. Halloween Horrors is also a solo quest and it's a wave system quest going from waves one through five. This is mainly gonna be one of your grind areas to, to maximize your points as this quest gets the most points and it's not even close to the amount. This quest also has a unique feature as you don't need to clear the quest in order to get rewards from it. However, if you're a person that you know you can't clear this quest and you feel that you're about to fail, you are best left to leave. To maximize your stamina, you are best leaving quest if you know you can clear it and just trying again because you get less drops if you fail. This the one, the preference that the people, because I get that question a lot on why I leave sometimes, is because you think I'm about to fail, and I know I can clear it, but just that some things went wrong, AI goes crazy, you know. If you play this game a while, AI is not the greatest. Try to be patient with the AI, so, yeah. There are a couple of story quests on Lamont doing this um, event. I haven't read the story myself. I heard it's pretty decent though. I kind of skipped through it because I was streaming and yeah, I wanted to get to the farm. Now with this event, we do get an exclusive worm print, Plunder Pals. It's a very unique worm print. It's the first time we ever get a five star worm print for free. Do note that it only sells for 300 L water and 5K rubies. Now, the effect of this is that it boosted your skill damage by 25, no, 20% and increases your lanterns by 25 and your treats by 25%. Upon fully unbinding this, it does jump up to 25% skill damage, 50% lanterns and 50% treats. I don't recommend unbinding this immediately as the multiplier for the lanterns and the treats do stack upon your team. However, if you're able to pull some of the prints from the um, the gotcha currently going on, there are a couple, and I'll take I will guide you guys to them really quick because I feel this is actually important with the um, event. So with this event, there are a couple of prints that will boost your overall drop rate with this event. One of them being of tricks and treats. My fault. My throat. Now, with this, you do end up getting 50% if you have it at base value. This only applies to treats. Do read the um, effect on these. As one of them is only for treat, and the other one is only for lanterns. The other one being the uh, Silk Lends a Hand. This is mainly only for lanterns. So do note which one you're looking for and which quest um, you're farming. As one quest gives more lanterns and one quest gives more of the um, the pumpkins. The treats, my fault. Oops. I clicked the wrong area. I'm not good at browsing the site yet. I don't use it that much, but I do use it occasionally now you probably see here exclusive facility as i mentioned this is a facility event sweet retreat is the free uh, facility item we're getting it's a building this building is crucial to this event as it gets a major damage boost from anywhere as little as five percent damage boost during this event to 150 yeah, you heard me, 150% if you max out the bad boy. Do note that the later levels of upgrades take quite a bit of time, so you may not wanna speed those up, 
but the early ones are very short and usually worth your investment if you want to get um, started on your grind as soon as possible with a good chunk of damage especially if you're newer to the game as this damage can allow you to clear the challenge quest that you may have not been able to clear before so I do recommend if you're a little bit newer to the game you may want to speed this up so that you can have an easier time farming and not stress yourself out being like I can't clear this quest now with this event there's actually a new system before we had a token box now we have a treasure trade a treasure trade in this is something similar to grand blue for people who have played grand blue this is a drop system you get dropped and you trade them in to redeem for items now there are quite a bit of items in here notable ones being twinkling sand as this is a very rare item in the game also you got mana rupees and um concentrated water and mass here so there's a lot of good items here and i'm going to go over the ones i find to be priority now plundering pals i recommend getting this immediately as fast as you possibly can if you don't have any prints on your characters as it does boost your overall drop rate more drop rate means less farming even though you're farming to farm less weird right now you can see that the later upgrades uh the later trade-ins for plundering pals gets kind of hefty i recommend getting the first two um you do get some for free uh, i'll talk more about those in a minute but right now it's focusing on the treasure trade which you get two of them pretty easily the later three are uh, a lot harder so do know that Nice Testament is something that is very important to get, but I would recommend getting this at the end of the event, unless you're using a three star or four star and you want to promote them and you need these Night Testaments for their mana circle. Twinkling Sand is another item that I recommend getting, but only at the end of the event. It is not that important unless you're an end game player right now, but I recommend if you can invest into getting this item if you feel you'll be playing this game for at least a month or longer now you see here we actually have two weapons to get from this event both of them being light attributed weapons one coming with a lance the other one coming with a staff the lance is very good as it comes with a decent nuke on this skill and it equates to around a mass limit break uh, tier two four star weapon and that's very good especially since you don't have to spend money on it and that's the most crucial part about this for a person who is more new to the game i heavily recommend getting this weapon pronto as it'll help make your farm a lot easier if you're newer vampire's lantern is the other weapon you can trade for it is a staff so more for your healers and this is coming with an extra heal for your healer which i mean is more healing can't complain right really good weapon i also recommend getting this asap if you're newer to the game as it'll help boost your damage a lot especially if you're newer bless water is uh well first of all jack will lantern i don't recommend getting this this is ignorant uh, to be honest, it's this decoration, unless you want to decorate your castle, then go ahead. But I don't recommend it. Bless water, I recommend getting, but only at the end of the event, unless you're upgrading a worm print for more might. If you're behind a might gate, for example, let's say you're trying to get to 10k onslaught and you need might, okay, then you may want to pick this up ASAP and upgrade your worm prints to get more might. The same thing, um, go to Concentrated Water. I recommend getting these. Uh, they are very important to get, but only get them when you need them. If not, get them at the end of the event. Mana, I recommend getting as soon as possible as it helps you upgrade your overall units for the event that you may be using um, incomplete units as I myself use the mana to upgrade my Edward for this event. 
Ruby that I also recommend getting as you need it. The money is not, if you don't need to upgrade anything, then having money doesn't do anything. So I only recommend getting their money when you need to use the money. Other than that, I'll wait until the end of the event to redeem the money. Now, you may notice here there are three light orbs and two scales. These are the worth value per trade. I don't recommend getting any of these items unless you are desperate. And I mean desperate, you only need one and you don't want to waste stamina on, the, uh, on running a stage to get one drop. At that time, that's the only time I recommend getting these. Other than that, I would ignore it. Um, we do have light trial coming up in one day at the time of recording this video. So do calm yourself and make sure not to go oh, oh, excuse me, overboard on doing this. Now we do have, now as I mentioned that we get some stuff for free. These are emblem rewards. These are rewarded to you based on how many treats you get. You see here that there's a big list of items you can get all the way going up to 1.4 million. Now, that may seem overwhelming, and to be honest, it is for weaker players. So, I don't recommend a weaker player instantly try to go out for 1.4 million. I probably recommend, if you're newer to the game, I'll try to go as far as I possibly can. Honestly, the way th the good stopping points in this area is personally, I recommend stopping at either a gold fragment, a golden fragment. I feel like that any golden fragment is a decent stopping point if you're like newer to the game. If you want to push yourself to keep going further and further on, use those as breaking points as they are very limited items in the game currently. So. Champion Testament is definitely something, if you have a 5 star, you may want to go instantly for this, so that will require you getting 250k. That's pretty doable in the, I believe, 8 days time span we have on this event. Not everyone will be able to do that, but for people who can, I recommend getting that done. As it's a very limited item, you only get one currently per event, and we had 2 events so far in the game. Another stopping point will be right here, 450k, get, you get the golden fragment. If not, you may want to keep playing a little bit more. Next stopping point will be 850k. So do note that you jump up 400k after the um, 450. And the final jump would end up being 1.4 million. Yes, you heard it right. There is no more jumps after 850. After 850, you gotta go all the way to the end point. And this is only recommended to players who have facility level of at least 200. If you are in the 200 range and above, I recommend getting this as you're reaching that point where you're going to start really start investing in this game. There are a couple endeavors to get done in this event. Um, there's actually a lot of them if you combine everything together. Anywhere from the two minute quest um, and uh, just normal things like clearing the, uh, getting a many treats in one go, like up to 7K and stuff. You can look at these in the event. It's really simple. Most of these, I recommend getting all of them if you can. The ones that don't matter are the ones that give you the, um, the 7K one and the 15k uh, extra boss battles and clearing under two minutes. This is not important, though I do recommend clearing the challenge battle one time as you get a Twinkling Sand right here. That's pretty much the event in the nutshell. I, I try to keep this under 20 minutes. I did pretty well, I think. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you think this was very helpful, please tell me how can I improve? What did you like? What didn't you like? And um, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, wow, I'm surprised you made it because my voice sucks. But hey, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.